In this tutorial, we will learn about the Le Chatelier principle. This principle is often the most difficult part of the chemical equilibrium topic chapter. So we will take a closer look on this on this principle and to find out how can we learn this principle in an easier way. Now let me remind you something that when we dealing with this principle, we will have to look at a lot of arrows going up or down, shifting left and right. And you may find yourself trying to find some pattern to predict the arrow directions. And I would encourage you not to find patterns. Because if you try to find patterns, you are not thinking logically. In order to truly understand this topic, this principle, you would have to use your own reasoning, your own logic to look at this, to look at the process of how a reaction will achieve equilibrium again. And with if you have this thinking, you will be able to understand what is going on with this principle. So I wonder why many people find it so difficult to understand this topic. And even when I was a high school student, I find it difficult to understand it. So I thought about, can I do something to make this understanding a lot more easier? Or what is making people confusing about this topic? And I guess I found the reason. The reason is when we try to present the question, we didn't really specify the time of the interruption or the stress being done on the equilibrium. And what does it mean when we say shifting left or right, or what does it mean by having increasing concentration and decreasing concentration? So I'm going to use this timeline to express this, the, the thinking behind this principle. So first, let me put a mark right here. This mark is expressing the time right now. The time right now which is at equilibrium. Okay, So you may think about this particular reaction, it is now at equilibrium. And after some time later, we have something done on the equilibrium. It may be one of these things. We call this stress or disruption to the equilibrium. So let me use a wet marker to put a cross right here. This is when we put a stress or disruption onto the equilibrium. Now, if the equilibrium is being disrupted, or we put a stress on the equilibrium, it is not at equilibrium right now, at this point. So how, do we, how would the equilibrium reaction react with this disruption? Well, it would readjust itself to go back to equilibrium so that the rate of the forward reaction will be the same as the rate of the reverse reaction. So that may, it may take some time. So after some time, it will go back to equilibrium again. So let me make it very clear. When we talk about these stresses or these interruptions or disruptions, we are talking about what has been done at this time. And when we talk about whether they shift left or right and the concentration going up or down, we are talking about the adjustment process between this point and eventually reaching the equilibrium again. So I hope you have an initial understanding of when we talk about these interruptions, these stresses, these disruptions, when was it done? Okay. Now, some stress is being done onto the equilibrium and then the equilibrium would adjust itself to go back to equilibrium again. So let's use this equation, this chemical equation, this reaction to illustrate how the Le Chatelier principle is being, uh, being displayed by this equilibrium process. 
So first, let's understand this chemical equation or reaction. We have two nitrogen, uh, nitrogen dioxide is a gas, two NO2. And then we have dinitrogen tetraoxide, N2O4, is a gas. And on the right hand side here, we have the change of the enthalpy of the reaction, and it is a negative value. It means that it is an exothermic reaction. So if you understand the negative value of this delta H, you could also write the reaction this way. Either way, okay. If this helps you to understand where the heat is located, you can put it there. So let's look at the addition of N2O4. So again, this is the stress, the disruption done to the um, to the equilibrium process. So now you have extra N2O4, and it is now not at equilibrium. So to go back to equilibrium. What needs to be done? Well, you have extra N2O4. That's too much. So in order to get back to equilibrium, the concentration of the N2O4 must be lower. So that's what happened here. We have to lower the concentration of the N2O4. And now here comes another question. How can this equilibrium process lower the concentration of the N2O4? Well, the only possible way to lower the concentration of this particular compound is that use them. Use the N2O4 by shifting the reaction this direction. When we shift the reaction to this direction, we are using N2O4 to make NO2. And therefore, by having this interruption in this, uh, this stress or disruption in this equilibrium process, we are shifting the direction to the left. Now, some of you may ask, what does it mean by shifting? Well, when we say shifting, it means that which direction do we have more reactions going on in this time frame? Eventually, at the end, ultimately, they will reach equilibrium which means the rate of going forward and backward will be the same. But during this, pe this period, it is not going to be the same. So we would like to find out how would the equilibrium responds, respond to the, to the interruption, to the stress or disruption. And this is what we find out right now.